Hello, and welcome to the Save Our Children podcast. We're your hosts, Becky and Bridget. Today on our episode, we have actor and producer, John Paul Rice. John began his career working on Remember the Titans in the early 2000s. In 2008, he formed No Restrictions Entertainment with director Edgar Michael Bravo. They have since released six critically acclaimed films and next year will be releasing their seventh feature called Game Day. A few years ago, they released a movie called A Child's Voice, a supernatural thriller about a runaway teen who answers a child calling out for help and is sent on a journey to find a human trafficking network run by the child's killer. It is a great movie if you get the chance to watch it. You may have heard the name John Paul Rice from social media and a video he created a little over a year ago where he began exposing pedophilia and talking about Hollywood. We are always blessed to have such strong fighters on our podcast, and this episode will be be a treat for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. For our listeners who haven't heard about you, can you give us some of your background? Well, Becky, that was an incredible introduction, and thank you very much for both you and Bridget having me on today. Um, Wow. Uh, What could I tell you? Well, uh, 20 years working in Hollywood, 19 years living in Los Angeles, um, brought me to an understanding of things that about our world that was not what I had envisioned when I was a young man going out there at 23. And It's not to say that there isn't merit out there or merit in anything that's done in the creative field, no matter whether it takes place in Hollywood or your own home art studio. The issue um, that I, I guess, had to confront was the understanding of that openness that artists have and in some ways why that is and how that can be uh, manipulated, how it can be uh, directed and betrayed. And, and um, to such a level that uh, it's incomprehensible to most ordinary normal people, um, the willingness to allow a monster of greed consume all of your thoughts and being. And so, um, you know, I, I went out as a young man to be an actor because I was in Remember the Titans, a movie that I love to this day and would tell you one of, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like, it's like a dream to be able to know that you're associated with a film like that, that when you say it, it means something. Mm -hmm. And, and it's been around for over 20 years and it touches people who weren't even born when it came out. I mean, it's, it's like that kind of film that is timeless because the story is universal. And um, these are the hardest kinds of films to make because everything has to be working in concert. That's the script, it's always in the script. The heart of the story is in the script. The foundation and the structure of the journey is in the script. You don't just throw a bunch of talent at it and see what shakes out. Yeah, there's craft to it. There's professional craft to it. And I love that about the arts. I love that about filmmaking. I find it fascinating. You can take an idea, put it on a piece of paper, and in steps, you literally build this, quote, movie that millions of people are going to see and judge uh, worldwide now because of the internet. And Um, who I am is just a human being like anybody else, like you are and everyone else that listens to this podcast. I'm the one, uh, what's his secret? You know, (laughs) it's not his, you know, what's his formula for what he does or any of that. It's not, it's not any of that. This is really about, um, a person undertaking a journey that they did not know where it would lead them. Uh, a journey of purpose and meaning, a journey away from uh, my childhood and running away from it and going out to Los Angeles to try to find my future, my life that I wanted and coming away with a book of wisdom that gave me the utility of understanding what this time is that we're living in it gives me great hope in what is possible 
that we don't see often. Um, it also showed me the best and worst of people consciously and unconsciously. And so when I looked at, you know, coming into a child's voice and making that film, that was my sixth feature in 2017 to produce. I had made five other films started in 2008 and each one of them traversed, um, a subject matter that was very different from what Hollywood was showing in their films. Now, that wasn't the reason why I did them. In fact, the reason why I did them was a series of misfortunes, which was <laughs> me. That always get... how life works. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, oh, it all just lined up and this beautiful path opened and here we are. No, it was a struggle mightily every which way to make those six films and now seven. And I did it independently. I did it uh, in a way that most film producers would have never done. Um, maybe once they would have done it, tried it. Um, I mastered it at seven and I still make mistakes. Of course, this is not like, oh, I'm just like this perfect producer, <laughs> but, um, I had a love for the story and the story is what drew me to the, to these ideas. And it was a child's voice that was a result of the election of Donald Trump, right? This is not political, but this is the mm -hmm. events. Yeah, yep. Everybody has a train wreck now, yep. right? Doesn't matter how you see it, what you judge from it, everybody's got a view, everybody's got a point of view, everybody's got a perception and a perspective, everybody's paying yep. attention. And here comes all the conspiracies mm -hmm. out before, and I want to be very clear, this is all before Q. So there was the WikiLeaks. I'm just giving the broad overview. Yep. The WikiLeaks, which there's the Hillary Clinton email servers, and then there's the DNC emails, and then there's the Podesta emails, and there's all these emails, these damn emails, right? Nobody knows what's what and how. It's just all confusing. But in some of these emails was language spoken back and forth by our political party leaders and some of the most powerful people in politics about children. Mm -hmm. That does not, that if you were to read it and say, what do you think of this, these grown 50, 60 year old people talking about children in this way in their emails, would you believe is above board and not worthy of questioning? Right. Because the language that they're using is not about, oh, bring little Billy and Tommy and all kids will play together. It's like, it's for us. It's for us. It's all turned into them. And the bigger thing that I try to educate people on, because I know nobody, nobody remembers what happened in the news two months ago, let alone four years ago, right? Or yesterday. Uh, or yesterday, for that matter. <laughs> um, but, but I try to educate people. I said, if you go back to the original uh, impetus of, quote, Pizzagate, uh, it's the same thing as Q. It's a sideshow. The real thing that's going on is an information warfare that's exposing the crimes of these people who have been doing these things to children over a very, very long period of time. Jeffrey Epstein has been in their circle for decades. Others like him for decades. This is bigger than Jeffrey Epstein. It can get very dangerous when you start talking about the implications of other things because you say, well, blackmail and sex trafficking and all of this. This is just a nexus hub for bigger things. Mm -hmm. This is an effect of their being. This is the part of their world. This is a reality. This isn't like a little vice on the side. This is who they are and they have a right to do it. And they are going to do it like a psychopath does. And, and so I know I'm kind of going around and giving kind of a swirling reality, but I, I came into the understanding of human trafficking of children on a level that I don't think most people um, outside of victims, and when I say victims, survivors, yeah. outside of survivors, and maybe a couple other investigators, I don't think most people have, I'm not qualifying myself as an expert, because I'm certainly not, but I'm talking about on the level that I have been exposed to, 
and the emotional depth that I have contemplated the realities of in relation to what this brought out was my own trauma as a child. So there's the relation and the marrying to all of this. No, I was not sex trafficked, but I grew up in a family of a mother and father who were very damaged people. Uh, and I'm going to tell that story a little bit tonight, but, but those two individuals, um, I was the fourth one and I was the last one and I was separated by 10 years. And by the time I came along, their madness was fully blown. And I had uh, what I would consider near death experiences, near psychotic breaks. I tried to kill myself when I was seven, eight years old. I was in the hospital. Um, I thought I had problems just by having thought I was a very functional kid. I was a brilliant child. I was, uh, I was an intelligent, hyper intelligent, brilliant child whose mind was uh, enmeshed with a mentally ill mother who had schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, uh, manic depression, mood swings, and realities that would come out of her uh, that could terrorize the depths of most people and be unconscionable to the next, to, to, to the next person. Like it, she was not perceivable, perceptible by uh, anyone's standards looking on the outside that there was anything wrong with my mother. She was, she was a world-class uh, level creation. She was not some uh, Cruella de Vil, you know, manifestation, mm -hmm. evil, witchy woman. Uh, but she, but she, she was sadistic in uh, a lot of the things she did and the torment that she, I don't speak for the others, uh, but the torment that she put onto me and my father, uh, what he did to me equally uh, in his own expression, uh, created a child that was extremely dangerous and unconscious of how dangerous he was because all he wanted was to be loved. And that's all of us. That's really at the end of the day, that's all of us. And that's very hard for some people to understand that, that your, that love could be so distorted in a person and them not know it mm -hmm. because that's all they know, because that's what they were brought up as, as children. And so when I, when I got into this whole world of hell, um, my world was turned upside down for two years and I had a lot of crap to process and unwind. And so it's been, I guess, to conclude this introduction is just to say all the places I've been are the depths that I've explored of myself in relation to the world. And um, I called upon all the forces that I know to be true to help me. And I found peace and love and joy in my heart as a child again that was reborn because I saw through the evil of man and I realized that it is our unknowing of what we are that creates these problems because we go seeking it out in structures of power to conquer and win. And we don't realize the, the evil that we're serving that's underlying it. It's not a rejection of the world. It's how do you re-embrace the world in a way that is meaningful and everybody wants, which is love. It's been distorted. That's why we have human trafficking of children. That's why we have pedophilia. That's why we have all of these overlays and child abuse cases where it's endless because we don't yet realize the preciousness, magnificence, and beauty of what we truly are. And it doesn't matter what relationship you have with that. That is a personal relationship within you. It's how you actually feel. It's your perception cast upon the world. Um, one of the things I, I asked this question, and I'm not some, um, you know, like college professor, although I think that would be fun. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, but what I pose a question to people is kind of like this. It's like, okay, there's a homeless person right there on the street that mm -hmm. needs money. And, uh, and, and is, you know, it's bad situation, right? But they're begging. They still got enough strength to beg. And 99 people walk past them, that one person, and each one of them cast their own perception on the man, whether they gave him money or not, or walked on or ignored, but you're the hundredth one that comes by. 
And the question that you have to ask yourself is my perception that I cast on this person here in front of me, does that change reality? And the answer that you have to come to is yes, it does, because I feel it right here. In that moment with that person, that's where Christ comes in. That's what it is. It's a power that is not in the structure and the hierarchical demands of the world of competition and acquisition and resource, you know, all of that. Resources, see, you and I, we all kind of deal on this understanding of like what's acceptable. And that's our perception of what we think is acceptable, right? So, so you can't imagine the higher levels of tyranny until they come at you because you're just not that kind of person that can conceive of such things. But in order to conceive of such things, this is where the cycle has to be, the loop has to be closed. In order to conceive of such things, you have to create scarcity. You have to create fear in someone. You have to be able to take fear that is not when you come up to them when they're 30 years old and you're trying to convince them of Santa Claus existing, but you get them as children because children are only there to do one thing. They are there to love. Yeah. And they're there to make make that whole thing happen there is no thinking in it in a up to the first six years there's no thinking in these children this is a hundred percent hypnotic delta theta brainwave state 100 percent programmable every moment her voice is there with you is like a washing of waves of electricity and sound and frequency resonating through your body, your neurons, all of this is firing up, new pathways are being created. Every word that mother is speaking to that child is sacred. It comes with a, a vibrational color magnetic field resonance that's going into the child like, like a downloaded program. And it's starting to carve out and shape and sculpt the reality, the emotional, the emotional reality of that child. That's the only first six, seven years is the emotional reality of childhood, which is later banished from our knowledge. Because if it becomes traumatized, we push it away. We compartmentalize it as a survival mechanism. We disassociate from it and we remember it. But that memory is not what we actually felt back then. That terror, that fear, it is as real to that child as it is real to you today, real or imagined today. That's why we're in the problems that we're in today, because we can take imagined fears and make them feel as real as possible and get people to do things against their own free will. However you take that in this time and how you see it, you can stack it on human trafficking of children all the way up to medical tyranny and the like of it. It's all the same damn thing. I promise you. Not that I have to convince you, but I'm telling yeah. it to your yeah. audience. It's, yeah. it's trauma is trauma is trauma, is pain is pain is pain. The expression of it, the capacity for which that fear can manifest that is a dynamic that is very unique to the individual and the environment in which they grew up. But the feeling and that emotion is as real to them as your fear and your terror is as real to you. And once we start to begin to understand this, this is where we can be empathizing with each other. We can forgive ourselves. We can, we can take more loving care of ourselves, unconditional love, that forgiveness that flows in our heart first for the Sometimes, and in my case, I know this for the very fact that I had to hold on to myself and only had myself to hold on to so that I didn't crack up, so that I didn't lose my mind, so that I didn't follow a man into the car that was offered to me, so that when my sister saved me, so that when I looked back at all of these times, I could see there was love and care for me in the darkest of places. And this is where a lot of times, you know, I, I don't blame anybody and I ain't calling anybody out, but this is where it's hard for survivors to, to reconcile that with God. Because you're going to go, the fuck did you put me through this for? Right. Why didn't you save me? And let me tell you something. This is not... Um, 
this is something you have to work out. But I will tell you this on the SRA, satanic ritual abuse side, they do exactly that to their children so that when they call out to God, they know that God will not come. So know that on the Luciferian satanic dark side, they deliberately and intentionally do that to their children so that it breaks that faith. It breaks that connection when it's the parents who are actually gods to these children mm. and they choose otherwise. So I, I mean, I look at the light and the dark side of the equation as deep and as densely as I can. And I just try to tell people, like, if you go down that road where you're bitter and resentful and hateful of God, and you can't see that in this moment, in this existence, that you're here and alive and present and have a reality to offer the world in this time, you with all your lived experience and all this crap that you've known and all the people that have come before you and all those who have failed yet struggled just like yourself and you're gonna let it all go because you're pissed off. It's like I had to come to the understanding of reconciling ancestral traumas really had to do with honoring them, honoring them for the beautiful children that they were born to be, that they were denied. Their suffering was my suffering. My suffering was their suffering. It emotion. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm talking a lot. No, no worries at all. It's all so interesting. But the that's the idea of that. They say when you when you fix your own trauma, it actually generationally changes seven generations back and seven generations forward. And mm -hmm. I, I really liked what you said. the The idea of when you start to learn about these evil this evil that is in the world and that people are re really are capable of doing that you can't even get to the depth of their evil because you haven't even uncovered the the depths of the trauma within yourself because you need yeah. to have light and if you have light then you can start digging into the darkness and and mm -hmm. it's it's interesting because the people that we meet the other the other whether they're survivors other advocates or wherever we're at, the people who have found the light have found the light because they've done their own work. They've looked in and they've figured out, why do I feel this way? Where am I at? What am I doing? And oftentimes it truly, like you said, comes down to what happened when you were a child. And it could be something like I've done a lot of uh, childhood emotional neglect therapy mm -hmm. and different things like that. And I came from a great family. I didn't have one of those. I would, you, I was never neglected except I wasn't emotionally helped either. And, mm -hmm. and that's where I look back and I see my grandparents and the way they raised my mom or, or my dad. And then the way that they raised me or my brother and sister, and you can just see the patterns that have come in. Yes. And for me, it's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm breaking that right now. And that didn't mean that my boys are 13 and 11 for their, most of their life. I, I raised them how I was raised. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm having to undo a lot of those thought process, the, the emotional trauma I've caused them mm -hmm. because of all those things, but that's what we're working toward. And that's what we're, we're going to fix it. And, and again, it's this idea that if I can start changing here, then this will move forward and start changing. Oh, yes. And, yeah. and people don't realize, like going back to your, your homeless uh, person analogy, nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, that's, that's very all-inclusive. Many people don't realize that that person is there because of more than likely because of something that happened to them as a child, that either something happened and they didn't get acknowledged for it someone acknowledged it, but acknowledged it incorrectly uh, or whatever. And then that's how you start. That's how you potentially end up getting into drugs. That's how you potentially end up getting into different situations because your mind, you're just really trying to repress all the memories that you don't want to deal with. Or you don't know how to deal with, or you don't know, you don't know why you're angry all the time. You don't know why you're trying to look for acceptance all the time. You don't know why you do the things you do. Well, it's because something happened to you when you were five. And like you said, all that that five-year-old wanted was to love somebody. 
Yeah. And it's kind of the analogy. I think we taught when we talked about a couple of weeks ago, it's the analogy of the dog. The dog will continue to love you even if you kick it. So will your children. And that's what we have to be really aware of, even for ourselves. What happened to you as a child? And again, right. your parents oftentimes, and I'll say this isn't always true, but oftentimes did the best they could with what they had. Mm -hmm. You're just a repercussion of all of that. And so now it's it's up to us to come in and say, all right, I'm not going to continue the pattern. Right. That's a hundred percent. Um, I think like about four or five years ago, I, I remember I was with this, uh, probably my last girlfriend. I don't know if it was that long, but it was a while ago. It was like three or four years ago. But I remember saying to her that I had this feeling in me that I, I didn't want to live this way anymore. And more importantly, that I was going to spend the rest of my life I knew in that moment that I was going to spend the rest of my not my life cleaning this out of me. Um, and, you know, it, it wasn't like I was some horrible, terrible person or, um, or some kind of, you know, like one dimensional uh, villain, yeah. you know, because, because the truth of the matter is that I, I've, I've kind of come to an understanding that is so profound and fundamental that the love that the child has for the parent. See, if you removed yourself for a second as an adult and said, anybody as an adult who's a stranger on the street does that to you, you'd beat the crap out of them. You would ignore them. You'd tell them to go F off. Yep. But it's your mother and father and you can't. Why? Because you don't have a choice and a say in the matter. You need them to live. And that's not a child. That's not a deal-making uh, decision that a child makes. That's the life decision that I can tell you, like, for all the things that my mother and father did to me, I can tell you far many more great memories that I have with them. Yep. Because the child will hold on to all of those as though it is uh, uh, literally a, in a box of, literally as though it's in a box of hope somewhere. Yep. And, and, and it can be brought out in plenty of times to defend itself. Ego plays a major role in that, of course. Um, but I, but I really, uh, I cannot tell you like, so I want to, I, I don't like to generalize about trauma in the sense that it's all in childhood only and alone, because a lot of times people uh, have other things that occur to them in their lives at a later time, but still leave its mark and its scar. Um, the, really the trauma scars that I, I think are, that are the hardest are the ones where it's completely defenseless, um, where you don't, you, you literally think you're going to die and you feel like you're going to die. There isn't, there isn't the moment where you can fight back or you fight to the point where you can't fight anymore or you, or, you know, quote, and, and no survivor ever, I would ever criticize him quote, but you feel like giving up. Mm -hmm because the fear and the terror are so overwhelming. Um, but, but on a more important note, the nurturing of that child and the parent, the parent, respective to what you were saying, I could see where my mother and father also, and I, this is, but I wanna qualify this in a second that they also, uh, quote, did the best they could, given the fact that there was no language or words or resources to even begin at that time in, in our collective history to begin to even heal, let alone diagnose accurately and 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago, the things that parents could get away with doing to their children on uh, not just in this country, but in uh, around the world, uh, half of those people would be sentenced to death today. Um, so we've come a long way in our child rearing. And the, I guess the important thing is the, the, the reversal on the, on the flip side is to look back at everything that happened once before individually and collectively that brought us to this time. And, and what I wanna say is that, okay, human trafficking, horrific, absolutely horrific, but it is a symptom of something much bigger. Yeah. Um, 
child abuse, I could say, is probably the root cause of 90% of all the hell in the world. When you have people that march with righteousness in their you know, hearts, but hatred, and burn down $2 billion of property damage for justice and peace, there's a contradiction there. And that contradiction lives inside of them. And that contradiction is why they can get swept up by the world events into a frenzy, because the foundation and structure within them is so weak that billionaire owned corporate news media, politicians, celebrities in Hollywood, along with tech agencies, can weaponize their minds and get them whipped up to think that they're doing something that's actually helpful and good and not, and not seeing the contradiction of how they're being used. The other side of that equation, though, is that like the, and I'm not picking on them, but I'm just using this BL. You can give me proud boys, whatever. I don't care. I'm not one of those guys that like, oh, my guys, and my guys are okay, but your guys are, you know. Okay. So any collective group that's going out there to take on something, um, I'd even, and, and I'll even put up their human trafficking of children as as a as a as a movement because I, I I I'm not taking responsibility for this but I was the person who said this is a movement that the mainstream media will not give you it's a movement you're going to have to do but it's heart led yep so it can't be just banners signs and marches and talks it's got to be okay what is what is a world with safety of children actually look sound and feel like you have to build it you can't vote it. You can't argue it out of exit. You can't bully these people. Their world is built on things that don't exist for you and I. Yeah. They are never going to have a, a moment of self-reflection upon the, the billions of their wealth that they have right. literally created on the backs of whatever everyone mm -hmm. everyone and 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 then have some come to jesus moment and say you know my god you're right we are codependent children of alcoholic parents who are in the back seat of the car right now as mom and dad are pretty much hammered driving down the highway and we are asking them begging them screaming at them shouting at them to stop pull the car over turn off the engine and hand us the keys and it ain't going to happen you have to be the adult the thing that I, I want to say about the trauma healing is that, and, it, and I could probably talk about this in, not today, but in another time to really focus on, it is the reconciliation between the inner child within you mm -hmm. and the adult, because the adult is the only one. You are the only one who can care for that little girl or that little boy inside. You are the only one. And the only one that can love you more than any other human is you and God. That's it. Sorry. No other choice. That's where you have to go. That's where I had to go. Gives you a deeper sense of faith when it's tested. Spirituality is really easy and, and all kumbaya and holy until it's at your front door. And then you got to deal with that shit. Yep. yep. And it's, it's scary crap. Yep. Scary. Now I'm not talking about spirituality being scary. I'm talking about the real terrors, the real fears where it's you, those fears and God, and that is it. I've been there a couple of times. I'm not proud of, well, when I say that, I've been there a couple of times. I didn't dr overdose on drugs or anything like that. Um, but I, I, I relived my disassociation in my body this year twice. And um, it was pretty terrifying in the initial phase because it literally felt like the world is coming to an end right there just, just by you sitting there literally feel like the world has come to an end and I, I could go through all the things that were rushing through my head people who lie to me betray me who I can't I can't trust anybody all of that and then I had to realize that those were not my feelings they never were my feelings those were the feelings that were put there that's why I'm feeling them because there's nothing in reality around me observably to be able to manifest that fear and so what happened when that moment came, I did call upon my angels, but what happened is that fear and that terror in here just passed away and it went down into my body and my body still continued to move through the trauma that it was working through. 
but I had total disassociation from the, the, the physical, mental. I had taken the mental and the physical and I had broken the connection. Um, and it, it, it freed me, my body's terrors, you know, like the real terrors, that, uh, the tightness in your legs or you know, things that I didn't even know that how your body retains the body that it, the body retains more than the mind yep. the body actually feels everything and records it. And there's a book by Alice Miller called the body never lies. It's a fantastic book, highly recommend it. It's uh, therapeutic and it will give you, um, an insight onto m many people who throughout history had very severe childhood, whose artwork and literature and other things reflected that internal state, but it also, she really gave um, insight into the mind and the stories behind the torment and the torture of some of these individuals and the longing and the suffering that they had to go through as children and adults. And yet look at this beautiful literature that they created or look at this beautiful artwork or these incredible ideas. And this is maybe where I try to encourage people to look at it in a different way. It's like, yes, you were dealt a shitty deck, really shitty but you have an enormous opportunity if you take the responsibility not to go out into the world and think that you're going to fix it all, but that you could still fix, you could still fix your life in some way that is manageable and reasonable in such a way that you know you can do if you did it. And then, and then you don't know what else you could do once you got there. And I'm just saying this as a, as a man who's done six, seven independent films, about to do my eighth, starting, you know, having my own company, um, working at, you know, major companies and corporations for the last 20 years and, and, and being successful at that. Um, the potential that awaits you um, is really goes back to the child's mind and imagination. That's where you have to go. You have to go back and play. It's not a mechanic. There's no mechanical solution to this world. Let me just explain this. There is no dismantling of whatever hierarchy you want to, that's going to solve the collective conscious problem. The structures are a reflection, a mirror uh, of projection really, and perception of our, and I'm, you could take it all the way up to government, institutions, uh, college, university, you, you name it. It's, it's what it means to you, right? Mm -hmm. But the outside world has lost its meaning. Our institutions have lost their meaning. They've lost their, let's say their luster, right? You may still want to every once in a while go back to them and, you know, poke at our favorite, um, you know, uh, blue check mark, uh, whatever, you know, your politician, your flavor, whatever you want to, you know, get some rah, rah going fine, but ain't going to save us. Ain't going to change us. Ain't going to fix this problem. This problem is us. It's not them. They're a symptom of the problem that we have allowed. And we've co-created this world with them spiritually and physically. We have co-created them because of our collective unconscious, not being aware of the fact that child abuse has been with us through the entire time of our existence, not just in our lifetime, but that it really matters what human consciousness then be, can become. If it can, in other words, <clears throat> I pose this question to the people that are angry at God, which is, it's not like a challenge to you, but I wanna ask you something. If God's work isn't finished, then what else can you imagine and bring forward the divine into the world? God could be, in a sense, becoming more aware of itself in humans, in human form, by these very conversations, new places, new spaces opening up, okay? So is evil. Evil is also becoming more aware of itself. It's materializing more today than ever before in the third dimension. It's got psychic mind con. It's got Ooh. psychic mind content. Yeah. It's now going to have physical manifestations in the future of children with transhumanist agendas, you know, all the avatars, the digital avatars becoming virtual reality spaces, virtual reality, pornography, 
um, immersive spaces, places that are going to take the mind in different places that we don't even see. The social cohesion, let me just put it another way. The social cohesion that once existed is gone. It's been shredded to tatters. And what you're going to have is a recoagulation of authoritarianism and libertarianism, okay? Mm -hmm. Republican, Democrat, I'm, I'm not trying to paint a whole, you know, this is how it's all going to happen. But yeah. I'm talking these, ener these energies that are out there. And what it basically boils down to is this. This is the shift coming out past COVID. The shift is a mechanized form of human being. It's a dehumanized human being. It's a AI human being. It's a smart city human being. It's a digital technology that offers the illusion of upgrade, mm -hmm. but it's an artificial intelligence, AI, non-human, non-emotional, non-feeling, augmented reality, perfect for a psychopath's world to imprint its vision on you as a mirror. And that's what all of this time in its cashing out is going to result in. So do we stop it? Can we stop it? Cannot stop the forces and the trajectories that are underway. What you can do is begin to build a new world so that when you have new refugees in the years, weeks, months, days, whatever, millennia to come, they will have a bridge and a place to go with food and water and shelter and real care. Because the loneliness that people feel today is a lack of care from before. It's when we needed them and no one was there. We only had ourselves. That loneliness and ignorance is going to be preyed upon in people who fall under electronic hallucination manipulation. It is the why there are online personas that people very strongly invest in and are tied to emotionally to maintain. Um, it is basically picking apart the psychological um, disassociation that our children collectively have been inundated with. Let's just say all the imagery from 9-11 to now, that's 20 years, mm -hmm. plus an entire group of parents that have grown up in the digital uh, world where pornography is readily available on their phone and 98, 96% of Americans have one. Um, our children are getting access to information and are accelerating the growth of their minds and the stimulation of them at an all-time high rate. Most of us don't even know who we truly and really are in, in the depths of who we are just as our existence, our own personal existence in relation to this whole place. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Sounds like a big task. Are you up to it? Yeah, of course you are, because that's what you came here to do. Right. That's why we're here. That's, that's the whole point of being here alive in this time was to do this, right? That's what we, I mean, if there's a God, if there's not, I definitely know there are devils out there. I'm not, I'm not trying to play that down like a joke, but I'm but, saying, I know what the devil monster people in this world believe and where they point their energy and yeah. how they want things to go. And they use our collective unconscious reasoning and minds to make it all work. That's how conspiracy works. It's not because you're in on the plan, you're doing your job and that's just enough. They just need you to go, go through these lanes, stay on these roads, everything will be fine. We'll take care of the rest. And the billionaire class wants to basically tell you that yes, we know what's best for you. And we're gonna remind you of who is the authority in this case. And if you don't believe it's a human, we'll offer you a computer. If you don't believe it's a computer, we'll offer you an artificial person. They will give you endless manifestations. That, that's where all this goes. How to stop it is what we're doing right here is to acknowledge its possibility and its presence that is with us, but it is their world, not our world. That is not our reality. That is not the future that we're creating. Mm -hmm. To be aware of it is to know what you're up against then you can properly go and put the divine in everything which is not fighting that structure which reinforces its existence and gives it power. If you reinforce existence and power, let's say like art, you create a real piece of art, not propaganda, and you put it out there and you go into that gallery and 100 people walk by, again, 100 different perceptions, right? Mm -hmm. all manifested from that one authentic expression of reality. It, it manifested a, a hundred more. 
And then those people, what hat, what what course on the cosmos and the trajectory that they're all on? I mean, I'm being a little hippie about it, but I'm talking about where they're going to go in life and what's going to move them and what experiences are going to shape their life. This is what we have forgotten. We are watching Becky and Bridget. We are watching the transfer of our authority go from a three-dimensional conscious manifestation into a digital transhumanist stage. It's all ones and zeros. It's impulses. It's chips. It's, it's, it's goggles, it's vision, it's, it's, it's bio upgrade me mechanization, but only because they've convinced and in the majority of us that we are not powerful and strong enough. And this is why they've lowered everyone down, 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 down so hard because you prime people for change and you give them something in response to what you did to them. Well, and, and these things to people and now you're going to offer them something yeah i mean even even our family sorry bridget i mean to interrupt okay. even even like you look at uh all the people you know it's just easier to stay i'll say in the matrix than it is to think for yourself they've literally created this and i say this all the time i was like man these people are geniuses and they're slow and they're methodical and they've done this isn't like Oh, this happened over the last year. No, this started decades ago, if not more than that. And we'll take one generation and then the next generation and then the next generation all the way down. And so it's hard. And we've talked about this before. It's hard to pull yourself back out of this world that we live in because it's easy to just let it ride. Right. And it's not the physical it's not the physical world that we're talking about that we're battling here, right? right. Mm -hmm. This is where you have to look at, and this is why I point people in this direction. The Bible, with all of its wonderful flaws, um, there are verses and passages in there that kind of give you an indication of the forces and the spirits at work in this place. And Ephesians 6, 12 pretty much sums it up nicely. It's not the flesh that we fight. Um, see, I... I I don't try to have conversations with people that don't understand these things unless they really want to know. And then I point them to resources and material that they can then, you know, investigate for themselves. I tell everybody, uh, anybody listening to this podcast, before it's taken down, go to YouTube and look up Ronald Bernard at the International Tribunal of Justice. I think it was in September of 2018 uh, when he gave this 30 something minute speech. And he pretty much laid out everything in this time. And I have to, you know, I, I'm not his buddy, but um, we've talked a bit over the years and a couple of years, he's aware of a child's voice. He saw it, he loved it. And, um, but he, he understands what we're up against. And he's trying to lay it out for people in a very, like what I'm doing with you. It's like, it's not hopeless. It's not hating the world. In fact, that's the one thing that I learned is about loving it, mm -hmm. loving it, putting love in beauty in places. That's what makes the darkness. That's what really shows the contrast to the darkness. If, if, you, if you allow things to become uh, decrepit, if you allow your citizens to just drug themselves, like, in other words, government is only going to respond to its own incompetence, its own ineptus. Yeah. according to the solution that suits it best. So all these homeless individuals that are on the streets of Los Angeles, the drug addicts, the mentally ill, first of all, we need an overview to look at what real mental health is, what real addiction is, and the causes of it. And there are people out there today, healing groups that can be connected and can go in. It is dangerous work, of course, but you can work through the local communities. You don't just need to go out there with, you know, not knowing what the hell you're doing, right. you know, walking up to a group of people saying, let me heal you. <laughs> not going to, not going to be the best, the best day of your life. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the thing is, is that I, I wish to encourage people to just, it, it really is the matrix. The matrix is the mind control. It's see, I used to think it was one-sided, and what I realize is that the matrix is whatever lives rent free in your head. People on television, 
could be a, a talk show host that you adore and every time you know your your favorite political enemy does something you go to hear what this person says and man do they really nail it and you're getting charged and like yeah i'm gonna post about that doing something about that no you're amplifying their world you are reinforcing the arguments and the issues that they are giving you through the news for and against daily. And I, I, I'm just offered this to people who think this is a straight, well, John, no, they, they did. They did. Those bombs were shot in Gaza and Palestine. Yes, of course they were. And what did you do about it? Absolutely nothing other than tell everybody all about it and tell everybody what's wrong with it and tell everybody what they need to do about it and, and, and where you need to post and say, oh my God, did you see this and how horrible it is? And look at how terrible the United States government is, and it just, it's a ritual. It's a ritual. It just goes and goes and goes. It's like college football season comes and goes, and we just do it over and over and over. And guess what happened for four years? Again, I don't care what you thought about anybody for four years, you had information level presidential campaign daily dumps of news for four friggin' years. And it weaponized and trained minds by the millions to be feeders on this crap. And it lives rent free in your head. And I'll tell you, the billionaires own the politicians, including your favorite one that you think is Mr. Smith in Washington or Mrs. Smith. They own all the airwaves in the media mm -hmm. and online. They own all the icons that tell you what to think, the tastemakers, the trendsetters, all that bullshit is just energetic, weaponized people who represent as an actor on the stage, not that they're conscious of like deceiving you in all ways. They're just as ignorant as the rest of us. They're trotted out because they have a certain energetic value and, and an agenda that can be accomplished through that. And the more they build up that image, the more you and I start seeing people on television and having feelings about them and judgments about them and thoughts about them. And, you know, they're probably thinking, I think they're thinking, you don't know who any of these people are. You've never met them, spent a day with them, heard them in a candid conversation before outside of a, a soundbite and maybe a, a speech that you went to that they had. I mean, seriously. This is what we've invested ourselves in. We've been drawn into this energy to have, I mean, mania level stuff, right? To yeah. where there are irreconcilable, irreconcilable differences between people that are totally artificial and made up and imagined. And what we got to get to the point, I, I just want to say this one thing. The one thing that we have to do is we have to get to the point where we look at each other and say, listen, you, me, brother, sister, friend, neighbor, stranger. We need to get to know each other on such a level that when I look at you and you look at me and shit's going down, we know where we stand mm -hmm. because we know that the people on television who are paid millions of dollars to put all this shit in our heads are being paid so that you and I have a hesitation, a moment of doubt so that they can win today when shit goes down that has nothing to do with you and I. That's their world and they're pushing it back on us to deal with. They're making us pay the price for it. And when we decide that they don't wanna, we don't want them to live it, turn it off, turn it off. Watch what happens. If you, if, I mean, I'm just saying this, if you've got a diet, you know, pick some notifications to knock off that you don't need just as a starter. Get outside, put your feet on the ground, connect with mother nature. The earth is very healing in this regard. You can look up earthing. These are practical things people can do. Going for walks, being out in nature. The more connection you have to the earth and nature and all of its beauty and all of the stillness that it is and all the joy and the pleasure that it can truly give you when you get outside of your head, um, you'll have a deeper connection to your spirit, your soul, other human beings, your compassion will grow for people. You've got to stop. You've got to stop this, this, this thing here. There is a reason. There is a reason why all the people in big tech do not allow their children on this shit because they know what it's doing to their heads. They know the possibility of what this can manifest in the developing mind of a child. You've got to stop feeding this crap because it can be easily taken 
and manipulated another way. And you must maintain your human connections. I'm not saying to be adverse to, to technology, but don't put your faith in it like you put your faith in science as though it's just interchangeable with God or it's interchangeable with authority because somebody up there gets up there and tells you this is what it is. Mm -hmm. This is what identity politics does to people. It creates class divisions because the identification of a, in this case, let's just say a skin color. Mm -hmm. In Think about this. The idea that a color of your skin encapsulates an entire lived and monolithic experience of a population of people. And who are the people that give that to you? The cultural engineers. They reinforce all of it. But it's the establishment and the people in the media that are messaging and showing to you what those words are, you see. Those words that are given to people who need identities in order to feel valuable and appreciated in the world. They, them, I've not talk, not knocking anybody transgender or whatever, but those words, I've seen people literally say, now that I have my pronoun, I feel welcomed. And why I'm saying that is so dangerous is because if that is what can make someone turn, mm -hmm. then there is so much more that we can be able to do to already let them know that no, nobody from the university, nobody from the media, none of these people value you and gave you that word. They gave you that identity that they wanted you to have so that they could move you. And you are welcome here now. And this is our space here. So what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, this is just, I, I mean, I, I know I'm talking off the cuff, but I, I've just had to come to these, these revelations. It's that easy. It really is that easy. It requires investment of your people and your time and real caring for others. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, the rest, as it happens, is going to happen. But the wreckage and the carnage and the damage that it does will be far less because you have a light that you are bringing into the world. And it's not just calling out all the darkness. It's actually bringing light into the world that is, that is feeding and nourishing and allowing people to see and hear truth for the first time, what it really means to be alive. The survivors know, the survivors of abuse know what it really means to be alive because they've felt death on an extreme level. So they understand how precious it is, but it requires, what it requires is the good hearts and minds of those who are also strong, but in their way, which is loving caring, compassionate. The truth tellers are the ones that suffer the most. That's why they're authentic. That's why they're truth tellers, because they've seen how bad it can get and they know the difference, or at least they're working in that direction. Everybody else can't conceive of that horror. So we need those who are loving and caring to listen to the truth teller and then take from it, not, not just vengeance i'm not saying that's what they want but we look at only through the traumatization of that and we have to we have to we have to expand it we yes we fight these battles here 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 and here we protect our children here 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 and here this is how they're advancing this is how they're doing it this is how they they move people this is how the school district you know all that stuff that's all important but we must take the lesson of going where can i avoid a future that does not require me to have such suffering that I then learn the lesson after the fact, after somebody spent 10, 20 years living that hell before I realized how valuable this person is to my awareness, my understanding that I can bring into my world. Okay. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you guys ask some questions. <laughs> no, I love that. Especially because one thing that society and just social media we've seen drastically change is we've lost that human connection and we've lost just even showing empathy in the human touch of everything so i love how you touched on all of that because most people will 
not really, especially in the trafficking world, care until a politician or a celebrity or they see a headline here and there, which you rarely see on mainstream media, then they're like, oh, maybe that person isn't a conspiracy theorist. Maybe I should listen. And it's so sad because most people, even taking it back to even supporting small businesses and mm -hmm. loving on people you know, people don't even support their own family and friends in their own businesses or everyday lives. They create this reality of, oh, I care for you, but it's just filler words, but they don't put the money behind it or the love or even sharing a post or commenting or liking, especially as we've seen censorship, but yet they'll go spend three to $500 on a pair of jeans or a, a thousands of dollars on a name brand purse because their favorite idol is wearing it or the new Paris uh, shoes of Jordans. And so that just like everyday things that you can see is people are like, well, I don't support that. No, you do support that agenda because you're putting your money and it's, sometimes it's not even your money, it's your energy and what you're feeding. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be conscious of where you're putting your time and what you're feeding because oftentimes too, that's those beliefs are projected back onto you, whether you want to believe it or not that is projected back to you. And then it also projects back to your surroundings. So mm -hmm. if you only hang out with a certain group of people to do Sunday fun day to watch football, that then leads to your, you only know that person to drink with and alcohol and mm -hmm. it goes to that whole scene. So you really mm -hmm. have to narrow down of who am I? What do I stand for? and really mm -hmm. look at what your beliefs are versus what the indoctrination is, but then also the circle that you keep. And mm -hmm. so you really have to check yourself. And the only way that we can move forward as well as being truthful with ourselves and holding our own self accountable in order to be able to, in order to be able to love and project love, we have to love ourselves and know yes. that you are enough and you are worthy. And so I love everything that you touched on because most people won't go the, into that depth of checking themselves. Thank you. Well, those are very, very, very true. All of it. Um, Exploring the depths of yourself is, you know, depending on how you look at it. Um, I personally, being in the space that I've been in for the last couple of years, I, I personally think that ex the exploring the depths of yourself does not have to be a, a dark venture, if you will, a, 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 a terrifying adventure. In fact, I, I think that if you really were to look at it is, is to, it's really to dust off that old book and revisit it that you really love. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories that I can tell you that somebody brought to my attention uh, years ago is this girl that I met in LA who was leaving. She was 24, I think, 24 years old. I met her at a club in Beverly Hills, probably like 10, 15 years ago, at least. And I said, well, why are you leaving? I mean, not like, oh, this is so great. I knew, you know, it already had its share of problems. Not like I understand it today, but just yeah. rude people and selfish people and stuff. And she, she said, well, I went to school for four years in Colorado for marketing or advertising, something like that. And I came out here and she goes, it's not for me. And this is not, um, this is a tough girl. So she wasn't bowing down to, you know, oh, it's just not for me and I don't know what I want to do. I said, so what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to go back to school. And, and, and do what? And said, bake wedding cakes. It's like, what? Learn to bake wedding cakes? Why? She said, because I went back through all of my memories in my life and I found the happiest and most joyful ones were in the kitchen with my mother 
cooking and baking with her. She remembered that she was five and six and all of her excitement. And I said, you know, that I knew gutturally at that moment that she had found a, a magic key. And, and that is when you take a step back and you realize that what most of us give up are the things that we love the most because we're taught from the time we were little to the time we become an adult or of working age that this is the way the world works. And um, the truth of the matter is, well, it does for some until they realize that it really doesn't for many, if anybody, except the people who profit at the highest level. That's not to hate a bunch of billionaires and say, well, get rid of them. No, it's not going to change the way you feel about life. Right. But what it does is you have to re, you have to deconstruct sometimes the fantasies that we hold on to. We have to deconstruct um, our emotional reality and our attachments to both people and the ideas of things. And the only way, and I'm, I'm saying this to a lot of people because I know that fear can creep in very easily when you start to let go of things that you know to be true and then you step into a place that's unknown. But it, that's why the creativity and the training of that, the practice of it each day, doesn't matter if it's a ball, doesn't matter if you're going into the dark for 20 minutes to lay down and just let your mind float, get your thoughts out of it, stop looking at the damn screen, all of that stuff. This is the, this is the space that has to be created in order for there to be new things to come in. Yep. That's the trouble that we're in. We're looking for a mechanical way out of the solution situation. We need a solution, a creative solution. She's going back to make those birthday cakes and wedding cakes and, and travel all over the world. And she got to hopefully enjoy that. But that's what gave her joy. And someone encouraging her to not worry about the fact that she had just spent four years at school and had big plans and dreams to make all this money, she figured out the secret before most people do in their 40s and 50s and go, oh my God, it really isn't this way. Look at it this way, Bridget. You're, you know, in relation to Becky and I, you're a little bit younger. So your oh, whole life- She's not, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, just a <laughs> tiny bit. No, no, but, but, the, but, but, but the thing is, is that it's, it's, it's true about young people and it's not, um, it's not a diminishing uh, attribute. You shouldn't, you should never look at, when people get, <clears throat> when people kind of disparage young people, they're really doing it to themselves. Mm -hmm. But the understanding one goes, of course, what else do you know? Not that you can't know other things, but there's experience to life that hasn't been fully realized yet. You've had, you've been in a package, you came out of this little package, right? Pre-packaged, <laughs> went into the educate, you know, went through the whole package and the program and you had years and years. And this is not just you, this is all of us, Everybody 17, has. 18 years of measurements of time and growth. And it was all doled out to you, right? It was handed to you and you were given breaks and you were given recess and you were given summer break. You were given all this time to play and do things. You can do extracurricular activities. Mom and dad having to run around all weekend long with the kids and take them to this practice and that practice and this game and that game and this tournament and that tournament and going out of town and all that shit. Okay. So <laughs> it's not shit, but I know. Well, I know that life. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like doing it for the kids. Yeah, right. It's all about the kids, right? It's not all the parents. It's not all the parents looking at each other like going, I'm feeling psychotic. I'm losing it, Jan. I don't know. He's like, I need a support group for, for the fact that I'm taking my kids to practice. <laughs> I can't do it You're anymore. Wrong. You're not wrong. Where's the food? <laughs> it's like, there's one more thing. There's still one more thing at work. But damn it, they're uh, happy. Uh, right? <laughs> so it's like, my kids appreciate me. They appreciate me. You know, it's like, okay, anyway. <gasps> But I'm saying it, we have all these like, we have all these like uh, structures for us. So at school, my God, you, you ask questions and you get answers. 
they give you information. I mean, you got to, of course, do all the working through it, but I'm saying it's served up to you. Yes. And college is the first sign of exploration, but it's still served up to you. So then when you go out into the world, it's not served up to you on demand anymore because they're now paying you. You're not paying them. They're paying you. Right. And the problem is, is that you go from all those endless summer breaks and fun to two weeks vacation until you can get up to three if you stay there long enough, or maybe four if you're at an executive level or five after 10 years, five weeks of vacation with kids who have summer break. Not a good effective way to live and be happy, except if you're going to just slave away and, you know, get them the best education they can and, and call it, call it quits when they're out of the house. And you've got the last couple of lives, you know, retirement is wonderful. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's not the only way. Well, and assuming you make it to retirement because you have no idea when you're done on this earth. Correct. And now Correct. you've just worked yourself into whatever. And you're also then recreating the life that you lived that you could change your kids' lives. Like, it's yeah. interesting you say that because this year, my older son, he's in eighth grade and we spent the first uh, quarter of eighth grade at school all, and we've been dealing with all this COVID nonsense for the whatever. Yeah. And this last quarter, 10 days, no, seven days before fall break, I was called and told that he has to go on quarantine because he was exposed. Well, Bridget was lucky enough to hear me rip the assistant principal a new butthole because I was not happy. I was like, no, there's no reason he needs to be out of school. There's no reason he needs to do whatever. And they're like, sorry, man, that's what we have to do. So we decided then and there that he would be homeschooled. And it's been a, we're on week three. And yesterday he was able to ride down to Tucson with my husband to go pick some stuff up. He's gotten to go, uh, like he, he kind of schedules his day and it's still very weird for him because he's like, no, I'm supposed to be at school for six hours. And it's, and whatever, like he gets, luckily he gets to go back to school. Um, cause he gets to be in band and that's his very favorite thing is to play drums right now. And he gets to go for an hour, see his friends, come back on the bus. And like, it's the best of both worlds. And for me, it was, I need you to be emotionally stable I because it was just wearing him, going to school, hearing, because of course he's got me as a mother who's like, indoctrination is crap and this is stupid and blah, blah, blah. And then he goes to school where he's hearing it and he's like, ah, I'm 13 and I don't know what to do. And so to right. be able to step up and be like, no, we're just not doing it anymore. And will he go back to school in ninth grade? Maybe, it's, it's open. Maybe he uh, will like to stay home and, and do this and, and we do whatever. I have no idea what's going to happen, but it's been a very interesting change. This whole last, what, 18 months we're in or whatever has been mm -hmm. such, you can either look at it as this has been the worst 18 months of my life and I hate it and I want to go back to the way it was and blah, blah, blah. I think it's been the most amazing change for myself and my family, like Bridget and I, we met, we started this podcast. We've had right. all of this different change in love and light. And with Emma, we started our organization and it's changing me. It's changing my family. It's changing other people that we've met. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to go back to the way it was because I was unknown. I didn't know what I didn't know back then. And I don't like that person. This right. is where I need to be. Yeah. Well, too, and so many people look at since the whole pandemic and they want to look at it and say, oh, however you want to view it on a scale of it was the worst time and there was so much shut down and so much mm -hmm. was taken from you. But at the same time, it wasn't because America is so materialistic that when mm -hmm. everything was, it literally pulled the rug underneath from America and exposed all of our flaws mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how much of, a am going to say bully America is and profits 
off of the exploitation of the children. Mm -hmm. Whether some are still waking up to it or not, they haven't mm -hmm. got to that point yet. That moment literally should have been a time where people turned to their family and held on to what is the most loving asset of your life, which is your family and your children. And it allowed people to go back to their inner child. You saw, I know in our state, you saw so many people buying bikes and riding bikes outside with their mm -hmm. kids. They were now getting to work from home and saving money on daycare. And some didn't even know how to function of how to one, teach their kids school at home, let alone, it really gave you the view of what your child is learning at home and yeah, what's being taught not. in this, yeah, or not, and what's being taught in the school system. It made parents be parents because so many often turn their kids to so give them the tablet and their kids are on social media or gaming or, oh yeah, go here with your friends. So it really made parents step up and be accountable and be parents and figure that aspect of their life out. And so many people don't want to face those emotions of themselves that it really shut down the world and said, oh, we can't go here. You can't do this. So you were in this area where you had no choice but to face it and to deal with it. So that made a lot of people uncomfortable because it's not what they were used to. And then mm -hmm. now that you see so many people pushing back of, oh, well, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the jab because of I want to travel. But now you see the people who are driving and, and flying those planes, they refuse it. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. now I can't even do that. <laughs> so it's a, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing that I'm going to say it's been beautiful to see because when that happened and some people are like, oh, well, they're not happy. Oh, they want to preach. I hate when people are like, I'm all for your body, your choice until it's an inconvenience to them. And then right. they want to bash the other party. And it's like, no, look at it from that pilot's point of view and the airline point of view. They mm -hmm. sacrificed so many family vacations. They sacrificed time with their, spent away from their, their children whether they're working overnight or whatever their shift may look like, same with the medical field, mm -hmm. to take care of and to put their passion of what they once had passion for and give us all of that love and everything that they taught, but they were taught. And indoctrination, now they're realizing, did I really have a passion for that? Because so now, say that. Mm -hmm. now it's changing their feeling and what they were taught. And now that they're mm -hmm. seeing the reality, it's like, wow, I spent all my money on this and learned this. And it, I now am potentially, they have to forgive themselves of this wasn't really what's best for you. And mm -hmm. whether it be the vaccines or everything, the indoctrination of what we were taught, now people are recreating them themselves and saying mm -hmm. okay who am I and they're really mm -hmm. going inner and standing ground on what their beliefs are and what's in alignment with them and really recreating their everyday life mm -hmm. so I see it as a blessing <laughs> yeah no it's um this time I mean I've looked at different things um what this awakened what this whole time was um, for people. And it's like anything, you can see it different ways. I try to like, for me, I, I, I try to get out of my head sometimes and listen to other people's stories and, and what they're going through um, because I can have my understandings even with a lot of data points, but then there's always something else that will surprise you. and go oh wow i didn't even consider yeah i mean you know when i heard the the um the statistics that the, that they tried to suppress the suicides among teens yes. and women yes. that had spiked over the last year 
mean, in Las Vegas, it was so bad. They had to open up a school district in the midst of their shutdown because so many kids were killing themselves because their connections with their friends and their teachers had been lost. Star athletes that used to be like, we're talking about on their way to becoming NCAA scholarship level players who are now addicts because of the fact that they're basketball or in some cases football which gave them the the meaning and the purpose which is not a judgment of them that that was that was the relationship their coach yeah. it's a father figure those connections were broken mm-hmm. the 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 positive that can come from all of this which is, i think is the purpose of your podcast and why we would even want to talk about these problems is to go okay what can i do mm-hmm. and and the question that i tell people is that what can I do really starts with you. It really, it does not uh, require a savior. It doesn't require a person in the world to give you the idea. In fact, the only way that you're ever going to do something is the one that you feel that is right. That's why you make your decisions the way you do, because it feels right. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't feel right, and it's just waiting on something to happen to come to make it all better tomorrow, um, that's not the purpose of this world. It, it, and, I, and I mean that in the sense that in the time that you and I live in right now, we are going to be faced with very daunting challenges, things that we don't see today. How we respond to them? Well, you've got your scorecard out. See how we responded to COVID. They gave the fear of death to 7 billion people worldwide, and they were able to take people on a ride, take them away from their rights. In medical tyranny, political tyranny, bureaucratic tyranny, corporate tyranny, big tech tyranny, you see all these things happening um, that will not last forever, but the scars will be here with us for a very long time. How we respond, what imagination we have, the podcast, just saying podcasts can develop into round table, round table can develop into community, Community can be done, go into action, building things, speaking them into existence, pulling together resources that you have, not waiting for the law, not going for the petition, not waiting for that favorite politician who can get it done in your state or in your, your local municipality. Pality. All of those things are important, but they're not the whole picture. Right. That's the show they want you to focus on because that's where you feel. Let me just tell you, it's very simple. People who want power rule powerless people. And the reason why they do so is because powerless people give them their power. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Close the loop. And and I tell people that a lot. It's you don't have to be the person fighting at the school board. You don't have to be the person outside at the vaccine mandate rally. You don't have to be the person out at the political rally. You don't have to be the person at the at the human trafficking rally. Right. But find something and stick to it because everybody needs to have something, whether that means you're going to stop shopping at big box stores. Maybe that means you're going mm-hmm. to turn off sports. Maybe that means you're not going to follow blue checkmark people anymore. Whatever it is, you don't have to do all of it, right? but you've got to do something. You've got mm-hmm. to make a stand to do something because it's, it's, it's the idea that, oh, you know, I'm just one person. I can't do it. Turn it off. Every one less person, every one less follower. And they want us to believe that you're only one person. Oh, yeah. They don't want you to, they want you to feel alone, trapped, yep. helpless, vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yep in fear scarcity scarcity yeah. versus abundance scarcity yes. versus abundance scarcity scared afraid fear abundance love joy and it's it, mindset my like, i want to i do want to mention because bridget we <clears throat> talked about this, this is symbolism right oh yes symbolism i wanted to explain we talked about this when we spoke and i want to explain this to you because this ties into what a um, psychic content of how people about how people feel what people think how they're conditioned yeah um so why don't we get into that with you asking the question and then we can start and i I just kind of want to transition to this unless you guys want to talk about something else Mm -mm. no that's fine um let's go into 
basically the sim. I know when we previously talked, we talked about the symbolism in mm -hmm. whether it's the music, right? Or, for example, Disney and your shows or your movies. Mm -hmm. There is a frequency that that mm -hmm. symbolism all ties back to. Mm -hmm. Can we go a little bit more in depth? Yeah. Of, in so, that? so let's just, I, I wanna kind of paint a picture for people and I, I'm gonna let you pull me back if I get too far. Um, you live in a realm as Nikola Tesla described this and I point to people to go look at his work and his writings. No, don't just quote him, but look at his work and his writings and you can look at mystics, you can look at all sorts of people throughout thousands of years who have pointed in certain directions to say, we, the established history of the world as it's been presented to you is in fact an illusion. Now, that can get crazy for people, but I'm just telling you, um, Hollywood knows very well, I'm not talking about Miley Cyrus, but the people who run Hollywood know very well what this place is and who you are, okay? I'm not talking about celebrities now, I'm talking about the people at the very, very top who control everything through the layers so that nobody sees the how it's all being done. Mm -hmm. They can feel it, but... So these are the people that wield the secrets of power. They're the esoteric secrets, the dark occult. Now, occult usually has a negative connotation, but because of conditioning and social engineering, um, Christians are oftentimes, you know, that's pagan, that's all. Yes, it's used for all this purpose, but those energetic values are, in fact, um, they're rooted in truths. They just twist them and invert them for their own uses. I'm, I'm not here to get an argument or tell people, but like the Nazi symbol was a, a cross of peace long yeah. before it was used and they these take everything good and they ruin it that's what we've discovered over they the years they twist it like and invert yes they invert they use the inversion of that symbol so that it blocks that energetic value i mean nobody's going to throw up a nazi symbol and say no it's the cross for peace okay so why why does that matter because in this realm there are rules here and i'm not talking about just the rules of the occult and all of that but the rules of matter uh, what we might call quantum mechanics or mm -hmm. quantum field, you can get it. You could not part of that is the Holy spirit. Um, there's also other, um, let's say petty blood drinking gods that have been manifested over millennia through blood ritual sacrifice that do also exist in psychic content among the collective unconsciousness, which that's a lot to phrase and unpack. But really what it is, is um, if you live in a spiritual realm and energy is harnessed for dark purposes, it has to come from a place of terror and fear and death, sex and death, and, their inver and the inversion of those so love that's distorted and violence that's that's that is glorified psychopath mm -hmm. right so those individuals know the history of this the real history of this place the real um secrets of this place which we don't see really i mean i'm not talking about secret societies now i'm talking about the kingdom of God that is laid out before man that he cannot see what it what is really around him surrounding him uh, in the field in the quantum field and how human beings actually radiate light into the universe and the cosmos and this is not just John Paul Rice saying this is Ian McGillcrest you could take Jordan Peterson's work you can go back to Ellen Watts you can look at Carl Jung you can look at Joseph Campbell you put all these things together they're all perceiving uh, universal truths that transcend beyond uh matter why do you and think they wanted us to stay six feet apart because the toroidal field of our hearts you know in a, in a field of fear is six feet less it's it, in other words six feet extension of your toroidal field of your heart which is a vibrational energy wave that interacts and influences everything both within and around you 
and, and it gets really, really intense very quickly and as to how that magnifies all the love and light and the structure of God and everything else simultaneously that we just go around, you know, just minding our business throughout the day, but all this is happening, right? <laughs> so because because it comes down that we don't know what we are. We really don't know what we are yet. We're trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. We're a human being, but you know, wait a minute. Well, I have a name and I was born. Yes, all that is true. But this is these are these are the these are the things that go beyond the words. They're just like forces of at work. They're it's almost like a baby. There's no tree, you know, there's a conscious being of color and you know, and it's talking to me as a child. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm serious, like this is crazy stuff, but that's that was all real. It's all real. <laughs> we just forget there are, there are other beings here and yep. they're in metaphysical hyperdimensional way I, I don't i don't try to convince anybody i'm just telling you there's more to this world than what we see and okay? the more the more you become in tune with yourself the more right. you will start to see those things and so i didn't mean to sidetrack you but I have a no very, no no i have a very funny story for that happening yeah, yeah. again so my husband and I, I don't want to say we're planning for the apocalypse, but you never know if like shit goes down. You need to It's a possibility that. in 2021. Who knows? But like the idea that, you know, we have a little extra food, we have a little extra water. We don't yeah. want to get stuck. You never know, whatever. So I literally say to him, do they make chicken in a can? Like, I feel like we could get that because you could mix it with gravy and like put it on rice. Like that would be a meal. We wouldn't die, blah, blah, blah. Right. Not a half hour later, my, cause my aunt was coming over Not a half hour later, my aunt walks up to me with a can of chicken and says, here you go. Apocalypse buddy. And I was like, I totally just manifested chicken in a can. I've really got to work on my skills. Like, could we manifest something bigger than chicken in a can because that seems real weak like, yeah. you probably work on like well money. you know like you got to upgrade your your ma- magical you know force like powers to you know padawan <laughs> to then jedi you know like yeah. sort of like luke skywalker between empire and jedi exactly. you know you're trying to manifest stuff and you're you're wielding the dark forces to like come towards you like you know i will have that can you know exactly but, it's- but you also got to learn to how to flow with it too. So like when you want like, okay, I want to create this center. Right. Where is it? You know, yeah, right. <laughs> Here's my million dollars. Damn done work with that. Yeah. But I like, I like the principle. <laughs> I like the principle, <laughs> but that's, but that, but you know what, but here, here's the thing. We're kind of trivializing in a way, but that is actually part of the magic of this place. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mental psychic content that is not necessarily in the third dimension yet, but is happening simultaneously. And when you get into Tesla, you understand magnetism mm-hmm. uh, on certain levels that you don't really get into at school. And then you can go even wilder stuff, like where it really, really trips you out, like on a level that when you start to realize that there are endless possibilities happening simultaneously, mm-hmm. at not just not just in the worlds that you don't see, but in your world alone, your, your, your brain, your consciousness is actually popping in and out of existence seven to eight times a second. Most people don't know that. Oh, wow. So, so in other words, your, your, your consciousness is actually, I, and I don't understand the depth of it because I haven't, but the, the, the principle is that it, it pops in and out of, of conscious existence, which you don't perceive seven to eight seconds, seven to eight times a second. So as we're talking here right now, it's popping in and about like rapidly and what it's drawing in and what it's bringing in, God only knows, right? right. Yeah. But but here's the thing. This is the thing you can be sure of 95%, which is why we're going to get into the symbolism, 95% of all your thoughts and all the things that I'm saying right now are not premeditated. They're coming from your subconscious mind. So your subconscious mind and, and the depths of your subconscious mind are quite intelligent. Um, your subconscious mind guides your reality, your, 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 your construct of reality, because it's the only thing you really know, because it is familiar. I mean, yes, you have judgments, yes, you have all these things, of course, choices and decisions, but all of those were manifested first out of unconscious creation into conscious level creation. 
sometimes outside observation, but it has to match something inside that lights that fuse, makes that connection, goes, aha. And sometimes the aha is not the mechanical, aha, logical. It's the in the shower, oh my God, that's it. Yeah. This is where it's happening, right? And mm -hmm. we're babies. We like have training. We need training wheels on this stuff because yeah. what, what people get out there in the world is about manifesting, manifesting and, you know, a law of attraction. And they're, they're using it through means that are meant to deliver a one dimensional upgrade of, you know, manifesting wealth manifest, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's not looking at your emotional state, the internal within you being in alignment for that, which you're manifesting quote from your heart and your heart, this is the other part of it. We're getting into this. Your heart has brain cells, <clears throat> 20 to 30,000 of them on the heart really? thinking it has a magnetic field it is 10,000 times greater than the brain. Your heart also manifests future states of existence ahead of your own thinking. This has been proven. Your heart, so the way that they try to tell people, and this is in CIA documents, is the hemisphere, the hemisync of your brain, the left and right hemispheres of your brain, which is so fascinating to get into what it actually controls and does. And they're not, it's almost like a master and a servant. Uh, uh, there's the, 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 the master and the emissary written by Ian McGilchrist. And uh, it's very dense, but it, it basically describes the brain relationships and how, how we create this. But the sinking of those hemispheres together, you basically put an idea, which comes from the left hemisphere of your brain with a feeling that is on the right hemisphere and an imaginative future state that you actually are living in, in the feeling which brings and draws in the change of the matter around you in order to manifest that. As I'm being very like condensed by it, yeah. but you're basically drawing in your reality through your heart. So if you're living in fear. If you're living in fear, you have a thought. Mm -hmm. But the fear is not in the thought, it's in the emotion. And that emotion connected to a thought, no matter how logical or illogical, is creating the feeling that it's in the heart. So if you have fear, if you're worried about dying and you have a terror of death for whatever reason that is, and your thoughts are COVID-19 or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, whatever threat is perceived it the body is responding to that fear for which you are thinking with that emotion connected to it and to break that bond uh is very 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 hard you tell me tell me in your life who you walked up to and told some things to and immediately changed their heart changed how they felt right then and there completely and totally said, you know what, you're living a certain way today that is just out of this world crazy. You've been doing this for 20 freaking years, 30 freaking years. I've watched you do it over and over and over again. Today, you're going to stop. I've had enough. Oh, okay. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me go back and, Oops, you know, but I, I'm just saying it, it's not, exactly. you can change hearts and minds, but you can really the truth is to do an act of love and inspire the good that's there. Let God take care of the rest and move on. If you're trying to sit there and worry about like some predetermined outcome as though that being what you measure it by is the success of that, then you're really attached to it and you're not open to other possibilities being manifested by that other person and what they bring to the table. It's got to be your way and not their way, not the way they see it, not the way they play in it. So, okay, we're talking a lot about stuff. Getting into this symbolism and why it's so um, potent is that what we don't realize is that colors, letters, numbers have energetic frequencies that are vibrating through the air and going into our brains. Now, you can look at it from a vision standpoint, vision alone, energetic, hypnotic symbols, um, they, they are on the basis of the fact that there are sacred geometries mm -hmm. and an alignment, um, in the cosmos in relation to how all these energies play out here and elsewhere, possibly, but definitely here. Mm -hmm. 
The dark occult forces know very well the planetary alignments, the cosmos, the stars, the energies that come in that are gateways that open. You'll hear about them in you know many circles online. Some of them are exaggerated or simplified. Others tell you really clearly what this alignment is going to mean. But there's a duality to everything and everything that they create here. So they pull in all of what they can using it and spinning it on a certain, let's just say, certain side of that disc where the other way is going. They're yeah. throwing it back a certain way because they're pulling energy from that effect of the alignment to be able to come in with that message because it will hit at a certain point among a certain group of people. Yeah. That's as that's. If you want to get deeper into this, uh, you can go into military experiments, CIA. You can look at all the records of the hypersonic weapons and uh, things that frequencies and energies and light and rays are actually doing. We went way beyond atomic energy and nuclear bombs like a long, long, long time ago. So these things are known by our United States military and other forces out there that we don't even know. Right. So why is this important? The energy, frequency, vibration, and the capacity of color. Color has a sound and color has a frequency and color affects human beings on a psychological level mm -hmm. by default. We see certain colors that bees don't see or other animals see and have sensitivities to. That's for our survival. That's our, that's our handicap, right? But it's also our dependency in order to make sense of the world we live in. Red and blue are authority figures, are authority colors. That's why you always see politicians wear the tie mm -hmm. or the suit, or they have always surrounding red and blue. Okay, now this is very simplistic 101 stuff, but I'm just bringing your whole audience along to understand the significance of this. Yeah. So when Disney is putting on their cartoons, these pedophile symbols and these colors, what they are doing is they're imprinting uh, entertainment. And that symbol is not directly talking to your child. It's going right into their subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. The child will attach itself in different ways, not consciously, but unconsciously to that symbol in all forms of its entertainment and programming. So, so the, the normal, let's just like pop out here for a second. The reason why they do drag queen storytelling hour, of course, Michelle T believes it her way and all that bullshit. But the truth of the matter is, is what they want to do is they want to uh, normalize um, distorted distorted a, a distorted human being which is not a judgment against a transgender person what they want to do is they want to invert sexuality around children yep. Yep. so that it strips them of that beauty and also conditions them to seek out these types of people who are very impressionable at an early age in their adult years not the same people but people like them mm -hmm. to carry that energy that message trauma as as sold to them is virtue okay and when you when you as a parent give your child over to the entertainment industry it's not that you're offering your child up consciously what you're doing is you're allowing these symbols and these agendas to go into your child as though the child only sees it as true there is no judgment going on Mom and dad, you are feeding them all the information. And if you turn it over to somebody else, they're going to talk to your child in a way that is not, uh, it's not the way you would do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens is that these symbols get repeated over and over in the sacred geometries. And their use in almost every single thing that is around us on television in the cryons, in the logos, in the graphics, mm -hmm. in our brands. This is all pre-planned so that it has an energetic register without your conscious awareness, guiding it, moving it, directing it culturally, socially, otherwise, 
and it becomes incorporated into as a part of the space that we occupy. Yeah, my and children are really, really angry that I ruined that because I will be watching something. I'm like, did you see that? That's what that is, whatever, whatever. And they get angry at me. <laughs> I, I, you know, and let me say it's, it's understandable because it is so prevalent and you could literally, I mean, I'm not trying to tell people what they should or shouldn't do, but you could, you could literally go insane if you started to, uh, I mean, depending on how you feel about things, you could start to go pretty crazy about this issue. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't research it, but I, but I want to read something that I think will help. Um, if, if I can, and this was given to me by a Hollywood producer of over 40 years, who's, I, I can't give his name away. Uh, it's not anybody of an A-lister, but he can be looked up. Um, he, um, he had a business partner that was, he's known about the dark occult in Hollywood for a very long time. So I, I just want to, um, I want to give you this one thing that he wrote to me and that I published um, last year. And this really hits the head on the nail in a lot of ways. Um, we are made in God's image and have within us a microcosm of the same forces, aspects of our nascent unity. When we balance the aspects of God within us by daily prayer and meditation, judgment and mercy are reconciled in Christ and we become shepherds ourselves. What we guard against are the powers and principalities the kings of Edom, the unbalanced forces that are active within us. That's never to be forgotten. The unbalanced forces that are active within us. If you want to reference Luke Skywalker and the Jedi are, that's George Lucas. He said it. He said, I took all the spirituality. I took all of the religions and I combined them into a universal uh, world where the proletariat mm -hmm. was the one that, use the propaganda to make it to its device. It's been the battle of our entire time. We have not become aware of this cycle until now. So the powers men call gods have been shaped by rituals and nourished over millennia by a blood sacrifice to produce entities which appear and act real. Think about what that means. Leaders. Our celebrities, our, our business leaders, our billionaire class of people that we champion as somehow the great saviors of the world who we need to pay attention to and see what they're investing in and what their, what their thoughts are on the, the coming. You see what I'm talking about? This mm -hmm. Bill Gates is not the end of this. Bill Gates is not the beginning of this. It's been going on for a long time. Yep. And I'm, I'm just being a little Southern in my draw, but I, I just want people to understand this is, this is not like today. They are conceived by us and they live in our imagination, not in watery metaphoric sense, but as autonomous psychic content. Mulok, Baal, and the rest of the Y-head demon brands are represented by families associated with associated interconnected symbols Sigils and glyphs. These symbols are the brands we now see all around us. We've been conditioned from infancy to view as normal marketing of consumer goods. Recognizing these occult elements, understanding how they insulate themselves into our consciousness and become automatic behaviors is part of what awakening is all about. Repeated exposure to satanic symbols, seagulls, images, and glyphs embedded in advertising and entertainment media content, content activates corresponding influences within us all. So what they're doing is they are preying upon these energetic values, words, language, all of it. And they're summoning into existence their reality. So you have the media doing it then you have everybody following it, right? And in and, and accordance to it. And then you get the rest of the believers coming in because everybody, it's imitation, it's imitation. It's really what it is. Take away the media and put COVID-19 out there. None of this shit happens, none of it. Take away the media and none of this, this runaround. 
Okay. So this is how powerful this, all this stuff is. And when he's talking about it from birth, we're not just talking about predictive programming and contagion and all the different movies and everything. We're talking about our actual reality and the concepts of reality and the constructs of reality in which we believe the world is. That's a very dangerous thing to start getting into. But when you start to realize that you're a child of God and you are timeless and eternal, and this construction of reality is an effect of a very sophisticated machine, but we could call it a simulation, uh, a um, holographic type simulation. Uh, that's where it gets really crazy. But like on a more practical yeah, level, it's like, Just right. But, but, but what it does is it says, well, you can actually bend time. See, see, and I'll just give it like this. When new information flows in that is greater than the lie, what happens? You change. You, 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 have, you have enough anomalies in the patterns that you have watched over and over again. There's enough anomalies now that now create a new ripple, a new pattern of understand, new understanding, new meanings. Okay. This is the power of human beings where we have infinite potential to create any reality individually and collectively this is why symbols and all of these things exist because you'll follow them rather than realize what that power is but that the also world, i think scares them too because if we start realizing as a collective we have power that's a bad oh thing. yeah no they're they're in this time that we're living in right now evil is consolidating and it is going for the third dimension the psychic content of of mind control they don't have the energetic this is true of like what a lot of people said to me that doesn't mean they're not going to try other things don't get me wrong yeah, yeah. but what i'm saying is that they are cashing out they're cashing out all that they have reaped and sown in people that's why this shit is some being summoned that's why it's coming forward that's why the so so the tyranny will pass like i said but the scars will remain tyranny under authoritarianism, which is the delegation of authority under the guise of fear, like, hey, you mom and dad, people I don't know, take care of me, fix this for me, solve this problem, tell me what I need to do. I don't think it's a political, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't go against left. I was a leftist. Okay. And I'm not being unsensitive. I really understand the psychology of this whole thing. And it's very yeah. dense and Republicans and conservatives, I'm not here to bash them, but dude, you only understand one side of the equation. You don't realize that you've staked all of your political positions in opposition of a false left that's controlled by billionaires who are turning the dials. Yeah. Before it was AOC, it was somebody else. It, 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 they will put endless puppets in front of you to keep it all going. And you will stake your positions and things in opposition of the tyranny and the BS and the authoritarianism so that you know who to vote for in two to four years not solving it, any of what we have just lived through, not solving it, any it, of it. Yeah. And it's, and it's the same thing. And that's the one thing that, because my family is the opposite. They're very Republican and they'll, I'll hear them say, well, if it wasn't for blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, 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 no. This goes across the board everywhere. And I said, if you can either watch this news thing where they're going to go fear, 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 or you're going to watch this news thing that says fear these guys. Right. Or what they're going to do. Like, Turn a threat. There's always a threat. There's either, whether it's right yeah. or left, there is a threat now or a threat on the horizon. Yes. There is never, there is never an end to the suffering or the struggle. There is always got to be a villain, real yep. or imagined. Yep. Trump, Biden, both sides have real and imagined uh, yep. saviors, real and imagined enemies, and all of it is real. So it doesn't matter because people believe it. That's the point I'm trying to get is that because you believe it is this way makes it possible. And you're getting a taste of it with COVID and understanding the medical tyranny and standing up to understand they're going to show you what they want possible. You have to see what is also possible. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so it's unplugging. It's easy. Right. Well, because the, the virus is a mind virus. It's a mind virus that preys on fear. This is what the symbols all mean. Coronavirus symbol is a geometric shape of it. And we don't even know that it looks like that. 
Nobody has ever Everybody seen it under a microscope. It. Most viruses don't even look like that. So, so the point I'm, I'm wanting to uh, people to understand is like, they have held up all of this in front of you so that you have an opinion on it or have some kind of reference to it so that when they bring it out in front of you again, all that you have already decided before emotionally and otherwise comes out again. They have awakened the trauma in all the people by giving them the fear of dying. That's why the human trafficking, the Harvey Weinstein, Epstein, Maxwell, four years, all of that is, there's divine order to things, but there's also other things that you have to be considerate of. And that is this, you are in a world of unconscious people who are seeking power to control resources. Wow. Even with quote, God on their side, there is only so much a person in that system who is at that level can actually do. It, and I'm not talking about, well, we need, no, who do we need to, no, no, that's the thing. There is, once you understand this world and what you live in, all those who seek to lead you are in some way part of the folly. They don't realize what they truly are. They don't realize they're a soul, that they're a child of God. That's why they feel that this is the way they have to do things because their whole life has led them in that direction and their understanding of it. The media gets us on board with public positions, whereas the reality is even if that candidate is saying all those things in that script and intends to do every single one of those things, the actual meaning and the implementation, if they get done, is going to be far different than the one you thought four years before right. when you first heard them and said, that's the person for me. This is what I'm trying to get. We are playing chase. We're chasing. We're chasing things that can't be solved by elections, by leaders, by institutions. But it's not a protest to destroy and deconstruct outside these structures that's going to make possible the change. It's going to come from within you, the individual, the creative, unique, and diverse individual and the collective of those people inhabiting the structures of power, again, maybe in a different way this time. Mm -hmm. not, not under socialism or communism the way we want it, but actually throw the whole damn thing out and start over and Try go, what's, what's true? Natural law, that's where we can start. We don't need to write a decree or a manifesto. It's right there. It tells you everything we need to do. It says, here's how you build a safe world for all children. Natural law. There you go. Yep. And law. from there, you yep. can create anything. You can create any kind of form of representation. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, we're going to overthrow. The this guy's talking about overthrowing the government. No, I'm saying decentralize. Decentralize. The whole thing of cryptocurrency, if for those of the people that follow it or into it, decentralize, decentralize, take the power away from the centralized sources, take back your authority. You're here as a soul, had a human experience. You're here on this planet to reclaim your birthright. You came into this world, what? A child of God who knew nothing about taxes, nothing about all the ills of the world, nothing about these symbols, none of what you just came in, you came in. You were something before you came in, but you came into existence in this world and the soul came in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, then what are you here to do? What are you really here to do? And there's some theories on this, but it's really about deciding whether you are a true son or daughter of the creator of heaven and earth. And what does that really mean? Is it a story that existed only 2000 years ago or is it a story that continues to this day? And I'm talking about the literal translation straight from the text of Christ when he said, you will do my acts and greater. Well, are we all just going to sit here and, and be sorry about the horrors of the world and pray and just, you know, pray that it all changes and that Christ comes back. And then when I die, I'll go up there. Well, that's very convenient. You get to wait. You get to wait and not do a damn thing and just right. wait for it to end. Right. It's kind of crazy, you know, in a way I'm not, I'm not knocking people, but I'm like, this isn't, this is what I'm reading here is not BS. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to instill fear in people. I'm just letting you know, like, this is what you're up against. 
Mm -hmm. There is a reason why you do a podcast and you talk to survivors of human trafficking. I mean, there's different angles you can come at it, but like ultimately, why does that persist? Because what we're reading here is about what these dark forces and these occultists, which are very small, very, very small amount of people. They don't want us to know that. No, they want you to them. think they look at television and how they am. Anyway, I want to, <laughs> I, I, I no, I mean, we, it's, I think it's a great discussion. I know we got to stop here in a second, but I want to finish this. Hypersexualized materials culture is not an accident. It is the product of occult rituals, ceremonies, and sacrifices which produce the illusory materialist environment in which we are, many of us, confined. These rituals are performed with the purpose to incrementally manifest a transdimensional parasitic unitary intelligence which propagates via cult initiation and or by cumulative exposure to satanic entertainment programming. Let me explain very clearly what that is, and I'm not going to go into an academic. We're talking about a these rituals that they do on your children in television with the symbols in the cartoons or the um, energetic reads that they put in there, this, these kinds okay. of things that, yeah, to increase uh, impulses in your children, not joy, pleasure, nihilistic pleasure for the long term. Okay. That's why they want your children to explore their bodies before they have words to understand what it is. They want to destroy and invert it, and they are going to do it to some of the children in this time that we're going to see manifest into young adults. Yeah. But this unitary intelligence is a mind parasite. It is, I mean, I've talked to a couple of people you guys have, may have had on there, but it is multidimensional. It's another dimensional being that is in psychic content. That's how powerful our minds are. That's why when we align with God and, and his son or whatever, I'm not like here to judge what people, but, but those are real divine connections. Those are real powerful healing things. They do exactly the same thing here and they transmit that an antenna, if you will, to our brain by doing this. As a result, they are certain to exist. Pedivore cultists openly promote and worship Satan and solicit kids on YouTube to take part in ritual ceremonies disguised, disguised as theater, art, or comedy via hypnosexual mind control games. Satanic brands employ ancient runes and talismans and sigils and glyphs to peruse our culture. News and entertainment media content is pumped full of embedded symbols, sounds, and subliminal messages or images related to sex and death. These occult influences combine over decades to produce and sustain a selfish, shallow, and violent materialist conscious, a culture where Satan and his Luciferians can most easily manifest the hierarchical slave society of pedivore criminality they prefer. This is the most important part, I think to say, and this is where it ends. The frieze on Apollo's temple at the Delphi, properly translated, does not say know yourself. It says watch yourself. And if we watch ourselves, we will begin to add additional layers of reflection, increasing our cognitive power as we learn. Humans appear capable of literally infinite self-improvement, and the blood-drinking petty gods do not like that. They have expended so much cleverness in a futile effort to channel and confine human consciousness, constricted human consciousness, harassed and distracted with unnecessary mandated tasks, busy work, initiatives, social duties, and financial harassment generally ensures we do not awaken to the real universe and the powers of the big G God inside us. The Satanists don't believe in God because they can't perceive a self-aware quantum field like the Holy Spirit. All they can do is what they've always done with drugs, sex, illusion, and NLP mind tricks. That's straight from a source in Hollywood who is not my only source, but is one of those sources that is 40 years into that industry. And he wrote that to me one day after we met and I, I've gone back to it over the last three years and every day I get new 
insights on what the depth of that means. So the beautiful thing that you all are doing is getting these stories out, talking to people, getting these ideas out, making those connections, not giving up. That's what it takes. And for each person out there that wants to do something about this issue, get involved locally. There are people that go to strip clubs, women I know. There's the Ruby organization in North Carolina that would be great to have on your show. Ruby, Ruby dot, I think it's ruby.org. Four Christian women with almost no money go into some of the darkest places and they help those women get out of there. And you know what? Here's the one thing they told me. They will let you go in to minister to these women because the people who own them say, have at it, like, you're not going to get her out of here. Mm -hmm. So that's where evil stakes its claim to tell you, no, you can't. And you know what? If you're like those other 99 people, it doesn't happen. But when you come along and you cast your perception on it, you change the world. And that is what is true. I love that. That was a perfect ending. <laughs> we'll definitely have to come back and do a part two because I know that we still want to talk on censorship and yeah. we want to talk about your upcoming films that you're doing as well as go back into talking about a child's voice and the timing of when that came out and the whole yeah. uh, Wayfair scandal and Maxwell documents came <laughs> out and how it got pulled off Amazon. So if we can really quick yeah. share, where can yeah. people watch that? Um, mm -hmm. It's not a documentary either. It is a right. beautiful film yeah. because it's based on actual facts and evidence. So if you could just share mm -hmm. where people can sure. watch that, that way when we pick up for part two, they can have something to relate. They'll be ready. With. Yeah, they'll be ready. Yeah. To know. <laughs> and I appreciate you all for enduring me too for two hours, just talking this almost has nonstop. Been fan this has been fantastic. When she said part two, I'm like, and three <laughs> and four. <laughs> oh my God. Five. Oh my God. Oh, let's take it one step at a time. <laughs> um, but let me say this, uh, yeah, Child's Voice for those who um, who want to see it, and I'll, I'll just give this kind of a disclaimer. Um, this is a movie about the road to redemption through love in one of the darkest places, and it was probably the kindest movie that we could do um, without showing anything graphic and giving you the idea and the world. And it's a supernatural thriller uh, about two outsiders the homeless heroin addicted boy and the young immigrant woman who's being abused by her boyfriend who started selling kids and, you know, kidding up kids and selling them. And I just got to say, when you get to the end of the film, um, it's, it's the beginning because the, the, the truth is, is that the child's voice, it's a new beginning. It's the one inside of us that needs to be answered first. Can you hear me? Will you help me? And our answer is, yes, I will. And um, if people want to see this film, you'll support us. The majority of uh, the money goes to, um, you know, I'm not here to make a profit forever, uh, like, you know, millionaire. <laughs> but um, if you want to see the film, you go to No Restrictions ENT. That's our website. And you can find uh, the link to A Child's Voice on Vimeo On Demand, or you can go vimeoondemand.com and look it up there. The trailer is on Vimeo.com, but you won't find the movie there. So, and you may find it on a couple of other um, streaming services for with ads and stuff like that, like on Tubi. So if you don't have any money, I mean, look, $3.99 to rent it, $9.99 to own it, share it with your friends, I don't mind. Um, but if you wanna watch it for free, I think uh, some other streaming sites may have uh, a child's voice up there too. And, and it's on our website too. I put some other ones up there, so. Yeah. Perfect. We will make sure to share that in the show notes as well as your Instagram and all of your social media handles. So again, we appreciate you taking the time out to really have these deep conversations with us and everyone who's just listening and awakening. I know this could be a lot to take in. So if you have to pause in between, feel free to do so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back for part two and 
probably a part three because we just love our conversations with you and we really do appreciate everything that you're doing and even your powerful voice and especially that one social media post that really took off and I want to get more into how even you doing that you didn't expect to no that to blow up the way it did so no and i want to just say this that one last thing that is the one thing you said one person who can change things Mm -hmm. your voice i was just a guy who was on a live stream with 700 followers one day on instagram and i went live and i talked to a max of five to eight people on that live stream and 150 million plus have seen it and it changed it changed a lot of things. I don't know. I will never know the total of it, but I know that people all over the world saw it for the very first time and heard it very clearly. And it was translated into six different languages. So never underestimate the power of what you can do just by speaking your truth, the authentic person that you are and standing up for what is true and right. And, you know, We'll, we'll get into it next time, but I just wanted to highlight that one point is never underestimate the power of what one person can do. Because yeah. if you had asked me or told me in my wildest dreams that that's what I would do, I would have not taken that cup. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have that taken it. Scary. Mm-hmm. It's quite mm-hmm. scary when you contemplate the what I did that day mm-hmm. and I didn't even really realize what I had done. Um, it just flowed out of me. And it just poured out of me. And, and then that was it. And, and then the rest is history. But you, you can't worry about, you know, you, you do it for the reasons you do it. And then you move on. And, and you've got to keep living. Yep. You can't live in that day every day. But you, but you know that you made your, you did what you could and you move on. And that's, that's what you do. Every day from that moment on, it doesn't require another video. doesn't require another this or that. It's your, your, your life. And you're going through it and you're going for it. And anyway, all right, that's enough. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's like, and cut. No, okay. <laughs> no, I love that because I often preach about the power of one. And that day you poured out and you you were the child, you were a child's voice and so many voices in Hollywood. And you took with your heart and your passion and everything that you've experienced and you spoke for so many who don't have the courage and who just yet and you gave them light and you gave them hope and all we can do is pray that our voices even if it were just one person our one voice is giving hope to the next person and shining absolutely light on it. So that way they can reach the next day. And that way one day I, and as you both will agree is that we pray that God will give you strength to stand in your truth and to find your voice and know that you're not alone. So that's right. Yeah. Everyone. Thank you you for, thank you for all of our listeners for the constant love and support and prayers. We truly do appreciate it. Survivors. As always, we hear you, we see you, we stand by you. Sending you love, light, and blessings.